when everything happened with George Floyd, we actually put out a T-shirt to say, instead of support black colleges, it says support black lives. So be us being able to pivot that quickly, that shirt made $100,000 in one day. But we had to pivot to be able to even do that. So I learned that the real people that are making money, they're able to adapt very quickly to mm. all of these things that are coming our way anyways. So the real entrepreneurs can take a hit and like put the fire out real quick. Like you have to be able to adapt. What if I told you for $1, I will introduce you to hundreds of entrepreneurs every single morning this week. From all across the country, you'll be able to talk to hundreds of entrepreneurs and I'll coach you. I'll coach you for a dollar this whole week. And I'll introduce you to some of my successful friends for a dollar this week. Would you... Would you take part in that? Well, go to themorningmeetup.com because that's exactly what we're doing here, okay? The only organization that gathers entrepreneurs every single day for the betterment of entrepreneurship, okay? Every single day, Monday through Friday, we gather, we're growing, we're learning. We got a book club. Have you ever seen hundreds of entrepreneurs reading the same book every single chapter, every single day? We're growing together, okay? You need the environment to grow in. Themorningmeetup.com, a dollar. I'm gonna give you all this for a dollar. If you wanna stay, Great, it's $79 a month after that. If not, no obligation, you can leave whenever you want. All right, themorningmeetup.com. I'll see you in the morning. All right, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast where we find dope people that did dope stuff and they have the social proof, meaning it's documented. Yo, I can show you how to do what I did because I did what I did. And we try to find people that can teach what they did. Are you going to teach today? I'm going to give it all what away. You did? I'm going to give it all away. How he did almost the M1 Black Friday and I'm all a, that I'm kind of stuff? I'm going to give it all away. He's giving it all <laughs> away, man. We got Mr. Justin Phillips in the building, man. How you feeling? I'm all good. How about yourself? I am amazing, man. I am amazing. Um, this is technically our second interview. We had your partner, Corey. So I right. to Corey on right. the first uh, interview. And now um, I get to kind of get into the the, the the mind behind the marketer. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll go ahead and introduce yourself for those that don't know. Cool. So Justin Phillips, originally from Houston, Texas, went to Howard University, co-founder of a brand called Support Black Colleges. We just uplift, inspire, and bring awareness to HBCUs and try to get our black kids back, in, back into our black schools. So mm. that's... What, like, what, what is the affinity? You went to an HBCU. Right, or? right. How, how did the brand start? For those that don't know. Yeah, so it's funny because I got into the brand two years ago. So the brand was started like six years ago. Corey and his uh, his cousin actually started it together. But we went to school together. So I was just trying to help out, be a good friend, made a Twitter forum, made an Instagram forum, built him up a few hundred followers because I had a digital marketing background, but I just wanted to be a good friend. So modeled in some of the first shoots, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then they just did their thing for like four years. Mm -hmm. And you know, they went back and forth. Um, they just ended up dropping it. Corey got a job. His cousin started doing his own thing. And then Corey hit me up one day. I was like, yo, bro, let's let's bring it back. And like, let's really do it. And then that's when I came in. And then from there, that's what it was. So yeah. in the beginning, it just started as Corey, um, you know, he didn't, he didn't know anything about HBCUs. Like he was thinking about going to Duke, Carolina, because right. he's from North Carolina. And then for me, I didn't even know what a sorority, fraternity, HBCU, nothing was like at all. So um, it was just a way for us to like say, hey, bro, like we got to Howard. This is really dope. Like people need to know about this. And it's crazy that these kids in high school don't know what HBCU is like. There's no reason. Yeah, so. I went to one. I didn't know HBCU. I was just, oh, I, I got accepted to college. Yeah, like, it's it's insane. Yeah. So that's pretty much how I got started. You know what else I didn't know? It's embarrassing. I found out on a on a, on a a podcast episode that, like, Kappas and Alphas, like, those are black organizations. Yeah. I thought it was just, it, it just so happened that all the, the Kappas that I know just happened to be black. And it was, like, a white. Right. I've seen some white ones. Yeah, there's a few. Too. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know it was like specifically for um, black. Yeah, and most of them all started at Howard University. Like I think like seven of the nine, uh, really the nine. Yeah, all the Alpha oh. chapters are up there. At Howard. Yeah. History, history. All right. Yo, so uh, what I know about you is you're more introverted mm -hmm. than extroverted. Yeah. Right. But for what you're doing now, I guess you're kind of jumping out of that a little bit because yeah. you've been behind the scenes for forever. Right. Right. What's that transition like? It's cool because um, even though I was introverted, I always knew how to turn it on. So mm -hmm. like when me and Corey, we first started, we was throwing parties together. So mm -hmm. like, um, and I had been throwing parties back home in Houston, Texas before I even mm -hmm. went to Howard. So 
I always was kept keeping to myself, but I always wanted to take it a step further. So when people were passing out flyers, I was like, well, there's got to be something else that you can do. So then we learn ads, like mm-hmm. things of like that. So I was always just trying to take it to the next level because I realized what people were doing, but I wanted to take it further. So I was an introvert in that, right, of trying to figure out things that people weren't doing, staying to myself, studying, reading, learning, but an extrovert to where I could pop out to the party and go mm-hmm. get on the mic and host it as well. But oh, word. Oh, yeah. So you were hosting the parties too? Yeah, I was. I was on the mic, like, for really? real. Yeah, like from age 15 to probably like graduate in college. Right. And I know it drains you because what I know about like more like the, like introverts, it takes a lot of energy. And yeah. when you're done, he's like, yo, all these humans. I right. just, I just leave gotta you go. I want to go to the home. crib. Like, <laughs> right. facts, you're right. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, so now it's cool because I'm working more so on building personal brand. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's just important. So I'm getting more so away from the introverts because I know the importance of personal brands. Mm-hmm. So I know that building a personal brand, you can leverage it to do a bunch of other things. So you got to kind of get over that to then build something that will have longevity. So, For sure. Yeah. And, and I think it's super dope because there are a lot of people that may be watching this now and they're more introverted. Yeah. And they're like, um, and I don't even necessarily agree that you have to be out there to build your personal brand. Yeah. You can like really be in your room doing what you do yeah. and build your personal brand. But but what is your vision for your brand? I think that, and I want to talk to, talk about that too. I think you can do both because I think that there's a level that you can take it by not leaving the room and, you know, just locking in. But then there's a different level when you start networking with others mm-hmm. outside and going to these masterminds, things of that nature. So, but as far as for me and my personal brand, um, it's really just to give back a lot because I, coming up, I didn't know anyone doing the same thing I was doing. I didn't see any mentors around. I reached out to people, didn't have a father figure. So it was just like, all right, I had gained all of this knowledge literally by myself. Now it's time to give it back. And then also just, um, just I guess, just shed light on my story and then tell people that, you know, if you came from the same background that I came from, you can get out of it too. Mm-hmm. And then just building brands now. So yeah. trying to get as much money as possible so that we can make change. So sure. you have to get attention first and then attention gets the money. And then now the money can fund all the causes that you want to affect. So, Big facts. Yeah. So in terms of um, like support black colleges, mm-hmm. is there a, um, like almost taking your eye off the ball of the main thing is that like, is that an issue or is that a, even a thing? Because you're like, all right, well, I spent all this time focused on support black colleges, right. the brand. Yeah. And now I'm focusing on myself to obviously expand my brand into other things. Right. Does it take focus away? Um, I think it's sometimes, yeah, but then you've got to just learn to start delegating and giving tasks and putting the right people in the right seats. Mm. So, you know, you want to work on the business, not in it. So I kind of had to make that transition to like, getting more so away from it and putting the right people in the right place to do the things that we need to be done. So now it's not, oh, I'm not in there working on it. It's not getting done. It's so-and-so has been appointed to do so. It's still getting done. But now I can even build and leverage it to build my personal brand too. So yeah, it's it's, it's no no focus being taken from it. It's just other people doing it now. Mm. And I've, I've experienced this where I have a partnership and I don't necessarily want to um, move away from the brand, the business, but I want to do some other stuff. Yeah. And sometimes that can cause friction between partners. Yeah. Have y'all ever had like any talks about that or? Nah, it's really cool because in our partnership, we've been friends for so long. Mm-hmm. So we've been friends eight, nine years and then we know each other. We know that Corey is more out there. He's more big vision. I'm more digital strategy, get the job done. So we can just talk through anything. So right. it's more so a good friendship and we play on each other's differences. So now it's, it's never really any issues. And if yeah. we do, we always, we just talk through it. Like that's always how it's been. That's dope. Man. Yeah. And in your relationship, how much is it, the conversations about business? Hmm. Most of it, it can, probably. Right. Most of about business, right? We live together too. Right. So. Oh, I'm, really? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're roommates. So yeah. So we talk pretty much about business all the time, but now Clubhouse is going on. You know, we even talking about more about business, but yeah. you know, most of the time, yeah. 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 And, and I, I think that's that's really, really dope because um, actually, Brandon, that's my best friend. Right. And I, he's, he's not coming from like the entrepreneurial background, yeah, but yeah. Um, now that he's in the space, you know, he got a bunch of cars on Turo and like just right. walking from corporate to this entrepreneurial space, yeah. our conversations are 
about business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I think some people they'll say, yo, well, y'all friends, y'all shouldn't talk about business all the time. But listen, what do you mean? We trying to build. Like, yeah. we trying to grow. That's fun to us. Right. Now it's like, I only want to talk about right. those things. So like, <laughs> <laughs> if you aren't coming to the table talking right. about that, I'm just like, hey, come on. Right. <laughs> what are we going to get to the business, Kyle? Hey, we've been talking about basketball for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that that's amazing, man. I'm I'm definitely gonna try to dig into your brain because you've acquired so much. And yeah. I think what's dope about introverts are you have the ability to lock in mm-hmm. and gather information, gather information, execute, gather information. And when you, if you ever, and I'll just like advice for somebody, if you ever get an introvert talking, there's so much up there that they're gonna <laughs> give away. All right. And I'm just on a regular basis. Anything I think of, I just say it. It's just right. I'm always around people. So, yeah. like, my information is exhausting. <laughs> so, I want to know. I'm, I'm going to try to identify how you, your perspective on mm-hmm. e-commerce. Okay. So, when you think of it, uh, a t-shirt brand, mm-hmm. right? And someone says, hey, Justin, I want to build a t-shirt brand. Yeah. Where does your mind go automatically? Self-awareness. That's the first thing it goes to because there's so many different ways to do it. And you have to be self-aware as an entrepreneur, knowing your own strengths and weaknesses because there's so many ways to do the business. You have to pick the correct one that fits your strengths and weaknesses to be successful. So, for instance, you can do print on demand. You can do screen printers and you ship it out yourselves. Or you can do, you make everything yourself and then ship it out. Each comes with a different amount of work and each comes with a different profit margin. So you just have to choose which one will play better to my strengths. Am I someone that wants to just literally market all day and the print on demand companies fulfill it? Do I want to control the quality and I make it all myself and then ship it all out? But that comes with a lot of work and hiring more people. Mm -hmm. Or do I want to get the screen printers to ship, uh, to send me everything? And all I do is act as a fulfillment company. They all come with different, different um, structures. So you just have to think, what do I want from this? What is the profit margin that I want? And what stress level can I handle as a person to implement any of those three ideas? So that mm. immediately goes to self-awareness. Mm. See, when I think of t-shirt brand, I'm thinking like design, cool stuff. <laughs> oh, I always try to get it popping. But you're thinking first, let's slow down, identify who you are yeah. and what level of stro- stress you can tolerate. Yeah. Dang, that's good. Yeah. Which one is better? Um, me personally, I'm leaning towards getting stuff done by screen printers and then just acting as a fulfillment center in, mm. in my personal opinion, so. Why? Um, we went the other way of doing everything ourselves. You control the quality and that's super cool, but you have to hire a lot of people. And the only way to scale that business is to get more machinery and hire more people, which then becomes a task of how many people can I manage, right? And how many personalities can I deal mm. with? I want it to, to be more so Let's get everything in here. We're really good at marketing. So playing on our strengths, let's market our, the best we can, get some partners that can send in everything all the way already completed. And literally all we have to do is hire people to just ship things out all day. So mm. it came from being more self-aware, picking one of the wrong ways and then having to pivot over and like, okay, this yeah. makes more sense to me now. So that's why I immediately go to self-awareness right, when you ask right. that question. Dang, that's brilliant. Yeah. Have you ever seen anybody really kill it in drop shipping? I'm talking about high level <laughs> drop shipping. Yeah. Really? For sure. Um, There's a few people. Um, This guy named King Calm that I met. His name's Chris. He actually passed away. Mm. Uh, This guy named Baird. Just a bunch of YouTubers. But back in the day when I was learning, I was paying all of them just um, for consultations, just trying to learn. Mm. So that's that's how I started, really. But I was like checking their back end, making sure they was really doing it. But yeah, I've definitely seen people doing hundreds of thousands of dollars, like 16, Money that they get. Yes, like they keep profit. Like, yeah, for sure. Which means they could be making a million dollars a month. If, you yeah, know what I mean? if, they, like, if they just white label it themselves, but they probably know themselves. Like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I just want to put a product up on a website, make it look better than the competition and run traffic. So, mm, yeah, yeah that's, that's real. It's different, real. you know? And then it's less physical work. Yeah, I mean, you literally just make drive the site <laughs> they handle drive everything traffic else. and then... China or Pakistan, whoever handles everything else. Mm, yeah. Got you. It got comes you. with different stresses, though, like customer service, things of that nature. But yeah. there's ways that you can mitigate it and stuff, too. So. Got you. Are, do you use a sa- the same formula for all brands? Yes and no. I think that there's core principles that can go for any brand. But I think that, you know, certain companies are going to have certain 
you know, ideals that you would have to just pivot differently. I wouldn't operate a fitness company the same way I would operate a, you know, a clothing brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that there's core principles that can stand for all companies, though, Let's for walk sure. Through. Yeah, so especially like most of the time when people are asking me about growth um, in companies, I always talk about four things. It's paid advertising. Just literally learning that skill is very important. Um, that's how we started off. Then you have content creation, but people don't understand that content creation is also curating content just as well as it is creating content. People get stuck on, I got to create so much content and then they never get started. Mm. But curating, like in our business when we first started, we were just turning on post notifications for all of these other brands that were doing something similar, like HBCU news uh, places. And they would post something that we would literally just take the exact post, maybe switch the picture out. If it was something about like an mm -hmm. artist or celebrity, switch the picture out, put our own branding on it, and then change the caption. We didn't make anything, but it allowed us to get more content out quickly mm -hmm. and actually put stuff out to the audience that they wanted and not having to like stress out about graphic design and stuff like that. And we were able to build a following that way. Then after that, you got graphic grassroots, go into all of these events, people sleep on that, actually providing an experience for your customer and going out to these events that have one, five, 10,000 of your direct audience there where you can literally go. I always tell people, if you want to get your first sale, either learn paid advertising or go to an event and go vend because mm. you're going to get direct feedback from your customer. For sure. So um, that, and then, um, yeah, just building a community. So that's the biggest thing. We post relevant content that our community wants and we're the first people to always post it. Anything about black people, black news, HBCUs, we post it first and that attracts the audience because the goal is to be a media company and not an actual clothing company. You want to be a media company that is getting attention because like I said earlier, money follows the attention. So I need mm. to build as much attention as possible. Then on the back end, sell them a product or a service and then nurture them throughout so they become a long, lifelong uh, customer. Got you, got you. Dang, that's amazing. Yeah, those are the four things I always focus on with any brand like trying to grow. Got you. And what are the four? Give me the four. Paid advertising. Paid advertising. Content creation. Yeah. Building a community mm -hmm. and grassroots marketing. Grassroots marketing. Yeah. And you, you all went through all four levels. All four. Yeah. All four. Where do most people get it wrong? Which one of these did most people like leave out? I think that... I guess a lot of people leave a lot of them they, they probably, like, I'm not building a community yeah. or they, they focus on one, grassroots. Let me just yeah, start build, Let me exactly. build, get it popping. Yeah, and then they don't learn paid ads. And that's yeah. like, that's interesting to me because that's where I saw the gap too. in the market. Like, yeah. I saw the gap. I was like, there's a bunch of dope brands and there's people that are in the bookstores and like, they have, you know, relationships with the schools, mm -hmm. but they don't know digital ads. So I can go in and pour money into the marketplace and, to steal their customer base because I know and I'm more willing to go on these um, these different platforms where the attention is. All I did was learn paid ads because we all know the attention of every consumer is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all of these places. But some of these bigger brands and older brands, they just have the attentions of the bookstores or the big box retailers. But if I can go and learn this skill and apply it to the business, I can go straight direct to the customer and steal that market share because they're not even willing because they feel like they're too big to get mm. into this new space. What do y'all spend on uh, advertising? <laughs> oh, we probably about like 60000 a month right now. So you spend 60000 a month yeah. on advertising? Anywhere anywhere from thirty to sixty. Like thirty is like bare minimum for sure. So $1,000 All a day. last year? Yeah. And um, then Black Friday, so around that time, you're, you're like 10000 a day. Like... Or more. Well, I told that <laughs> I told my um, my guy Leon, you can spend anywhere from ten to f like ninety nine thousand dollars um, a day. <laughs> <laughs> but I was denying that hundred thousand, Leon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Leon runs y'all ads. Yeah, he does. But you know how to do it. Yeah. So my thing is always hiring experts. So I was good taking it from one place to another, and I did it for a long period in the business. But when I was like, okay. This is not something I want to focus all of my time on all yeah. day. Hand it off to somebody else that can do gotcha. it better than me. And now I know the jargon and I know how to actually do it. You can't trick me. So now I know like, mm. nah, like that's not how this works. Yeah, so you know, sure. being a practitioner as well helps out. Yeah. Make sure you follow at Got Trends. That's my brother, Leon. <laughs> he did a, a, a bunch of ads for me, the Social Proof Conference, things of that nature. So um, if, you, if you're familiar with Social Proof Conference, um, definitely follow Got Trends. That's my that's my brother, man. Just a good dude too. Yeah, man. definitely. I think it's Go Trends, by the way. Go too. Trends. Yeah. Go Trends.
Yeah, I get the T in there. Go Me too. Trends. That's what I thought too. <laughs> Go Trends. All right, cool. So what have you learned about digital marketing in terms of advertising? Yeah, oh, that's a good question. I learned three things. I learned that if you get any of these three things wrong, then it's going to fail no matter what. So you have to have the copywriting right and down pack. That's going to actually give value to the audience that's receiving it. Mm. Two, you have to have the creative down right. If you... And then one more thing, then you have to have your targeting right. So if you get any one, not two, just one of those three things wrong, it's most likely going to fail. If I have a, the perfect video. So copy, copy is the copywriting. Let's, yeah, let's copy break is the copywriting, the ad, the text in the advertisement. The text in the advertisement. Yes. What you're saying. What you're saying to the audience and putting in front of them. What then, is the, what, like, what do you need to know in terms of the copy? Yeah, you just need to know your brand messaging. A lot of what we did was just telling people what we were about and what we do. And then also just kind of borrowing from the bigger players in the space. I just used the Facebook ads library. You Google Facebook ads library. You literally can type in any brand name and it'll show you all of the active ads that they currently are running. Mm. So I would literally just go there, type in any of my competition or type in any of the bigger brands, Nike, Adidas, and literally look at exactly what they're doing and say, okay, I like that. I don't like this. I could spin that in this way to do Hold for on, my Hold on, you brand. can go where? What's the name? What is it? It's a Facebook ads library. Facebook ads library. And it's all public information. Yeah, literally. And I can see what Support Black yes. Colleges ads were running. Yes. You can go on there right now and type in Support Black Colleges. It'll show you all of our active ads, how long they've been running, and a approximate amount of how much we're spending And I'll be able to see your copy. Yeah. And I can copy. steal your copy. You literally can copy and paste it. So that's so what- So Nike, Adidas. Anybody. Literally anybody. Wow. Yeah. So that's something that we, um, so text copy or ad copy, yep. creative, and the creative, the video, and the then video. the targeting. Okay. Let me, let me go into creative. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by the creative? So the picture or video that you're using for the actual gotcha. ad. Yeah. And go back one step in terms of copywriting. Give me an example of maybe some tweaks that you made in words, language, some things you've learned about the language. Yeah, so um, I learned to, one, add emojis. They um, they actually really help g get the audience there um, or just like get their attention. I learned also to tr not sell that much. So a lot of the most, the best performing ads of ours are literally us not even trying to sell at all. It will literally just be something along the lines of, let me think, um, we went to go give back to a school and go speak in front of a school. We had our hoodies on. That was that. We showed a video of us giving value. And then the actual text, we said, hey, the owners of Support Black College just went to Laurel High School out in wherever, uh, Georgia, and gave back. Here was what happened. Things of that nature. And those end up performing better than when you're selling and mm. saying something like, um, you know, check out the new hoodie, blah, right. blah, blah. Of like the Exclusive hoodie exactly drop is. now. Everyone's so, loving it. Yeah, and then even if we do have video that shows the hoodies and like in slow motion looking all cool, it'll be our mission is to bring our black kids back to our schools and we uplift, inspire, and bring awareness to uh, uh, HBCUs. Like that's the type of copy that we're mm. using. Not, hey, this is the product. It dropped gotcha. on da-da-da day. It's, so that's the tweak that we had to make in our mindset. It was more so bringing value, being educational, and just not even trying to sell. More so evoking emotion because we all know people make... Purchases based off how they feel, yeah. not based off of you trying to sell them. And actually, people run away from people that are trying to sell to them. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. All right, so that's the copy. Mm -hmm. Creative. Yeah. Do you do more pictures, videos, both, text? Yeah, yeah. mixture. A mixture of both. Um, I find that video performs a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, both. So give me an idea of what's one of your best pictures that perform? Um, just Bro, customers, like actual customers wearing uh, things. And then the best videos is um, us explaining our message. Like we weren't even selling. It was literally me and Corey sitting on a white backdrop. Hey, my name is Justin Phillips. We started this brand because of this, this, and that. I, I was sitting in my barber chair and I got into Baylor University, the University of North Texas and Howard. And he told me to go to Howard University and I didn't know what it was. I picked that. Now we're here and we hire black seamstresses. We hire da, da, da. Like that was the type Dang, of message. So story. But story. In the creative. Yeah, yeah. But then also weaving in B-roll with us wearing things mm -hmm. and new products and things of that nature. So 
Along yeah. with the right copy. Along with the, the right copy and then targeting the right people. So you have to get those three things right. Because if I have the perfect message and I have the perfect creative, but I show it to someone that isn't resonating with it, then it fails. Mm -hmm. Or if I put the right copy in front of the right person, but the creative is trash, they can't resonate with it enough to even go make a decision. Mm -hmm. So if you get any one of those three things wrong, then it's cooked for you. So, so walk, walk me through the people. What was the word you used for it? What? The... They use people? Yeah. Like the use a targeting? different word. You said the copy, creative, and something else. Uh targeting. Targeting. Yeah. So walk me through targeting. How do you how do you break down that? Yeah. So I do five things. Well, not five things. So I have five categories. I have uh celebrities and uh, celebrities, public figures, magazines, TV shows, um, brands, and publications. So I guess six. But what I do is I take five from each of these three things. So if we're talking about who I'm going to target on Facebook, I'm going to say five brands. And it might be someone similar to me, my competition, whoever. So let's just say we're talking about a new streetwear brand. I might say Bape, the hundreds, whoever, right? Then what I do is I go use a tool called the Facebook Audience Insights. Then what that does is literally shows you everybody that's on Facebook, their demographics, their psychographics, like literally everything about them. And you can plug in one at a time an interest and it'll show you all of the people, their demographic, psychographic, age, all of that, and what they're doing on Facebook. Mm. So... But what's cool about it is that there's a button there that you can click called page likes. And what it does is, is I'm nerding. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 let's, let's go. Because there's some nerds out there <laughs> like, we'll keep nerding. All right. But what, then what it does is it shows you what's called an affinity score. So if I type in BAPE, it'll show me an affinity score for all of the other interests that are on Facebook that are, if they follow BAPE, they're more likely to also follow this brand as well mm. on Facebook. So I might type in vape in the interest and the page likes might say the hundreds, diamond supply, whoever. But what's cool about it is that there's going to be hundreds of them and most of them you won't know. So what I do is I click on all of them and open up a new page and I go look to see what these brands are doing, especially the ones that I don't know. Because when we're targeting, we limit ourselves to the things that we know. So if I'm talking about mm. five brands, five celebrities, these are just people, things, magazines that I personally know, but there's so much other stuff out there that we can target. So for instance, we knew when we were targeting magazines, we knew BT source essence. But when I went to go plug all of those into the Facebook audience insights, I got a list of a long list of others. I have I used Jet Magazine, which I didn't know of at the time, but I knew from back in the day, but mm -hmm. it didn't make like it didn't resonate with me. And then I've used that as my targeting. And that ended up being the best performing uh, mm -hmm. interest for us to date, but I wouldn't have known that if I just went off of what I already knew. So I use tools like the <laughs> Facebook Audience Insights to find all of the different people that I'm going to actually target. Yeah, Yo, you, when you like when the average person thinks of Facebook ads, they think of the little joint that pops up. It's like, Boost. who do you want to target? <laughs> <laughs> 22 to 45. <laughs> Georgia. What parts of Georgia? Atlanta. And I, thought, right. I actually did it. I thought I was doing something like, Ooh, we're, we're getting really we're getting detailed. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting in there. <laughs> I, I put in what they like, uh, personal development, right. motivation. <laughs> and then I think they suggested some stuff. I was like, ooh, that's oh, a yeah. good one. <laughs> Doing it all ooh, wrong. that's a good one. Doing it all wrong. Yo, it's, it really is a science, bro. It is. It definitely is. Golly. Yeah, bro. So have you ever seen someone do it all themselves well? Um, I think that it's difficult to do that. Yeah. Because... I had to, like like I said, get consultations and stuff just to learn. And I spent days and days on YouTube and courses and all of that. Someone to just guess off the back and get it right, you you got some Like, that's a gift. Mm. But, yeah. Golly. Yeah. All right. So, are you are you in the consulting uh, space just yet? Nah, not right now. I've been seeing a lot of our, our friend group, like, don't do one-on-ones and consulting and this and mm -hmm. that. Like, do group mentorships. So I'm leaning more towards that right now. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, I don't know. Not yet. Yeah, I, I, I still do it. I mean, it's just, um, I, always, I just keep raising my prices. Yeah. I just keep raising. Because, you know, like, you give some really valuable information. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't charge people for the information. I charge people for my time. Uh, so if I got to yeah. take an hour out of my day. Right. You just got to you have to pay me to take an hour out of my right. day. So right? how do you how do you structure the the hourly rate for your personal business? Um I so here's here's really how I play it. When it's when it starts getting booked too fast randomly, I raise the price. Oh, uh, okay. 
Fair enough. Yeah. Right. So I I literally started two hundred dollars. I'm thinking in my head, if I do three sessions a day, two hundred dollars is six hundred dollars a day right. over a week. That's forty two hundred dollars. Right. Right. That's a quarter million a year. I do it's easy. It. It's easy. <laughs> but then I started thinking like I don't want to do that. Right. I don't like. I don't necessarily want to be the the person that has to work for money. Yeah. No matter how much it is. Right. So. We just continue to scale. Eventually, we'll be at a thousand dollars. Damon John, I want to say, um, I forgot what his number was, but when I looked at it, it was ridiculous. I bet. But I guess what he was saying to me, without saying it, is the ones that really want to talk to me. Yeah, you got to make it worth my time. Right. Because so, you can be doing, yeah. Absolutely. Right. And you know what? I'm actually thinking I'm going to raise my price again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I think I'm going to raise it. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm going to go out and raise it. Because right now, I think it's um, $5.50 an hour. And it's it's getting booked about twice a week. Nice. And I'm like, oh, well. And, and then the thing is, it's getting booked at like, Inconvenient times. Oh, I'm yeah, like, like, I, had this right. <laughs> <laughs> I had some stuff to do. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah. So that's how right, I okay. do mine. Yeah. But so what would be your intention in terms of like coaching? Do you want to get into coaching or consulting? Or I what? think so. Um, because I get so many messages about it, especially mm. like being on Clubhouse and just giving game there. You get hundreds of DMs like, yo, do you do mentorship? Do you do coaching? So I'm like, if there's a need for it, then I want to meet it. But I want to make sure that it's not at the expense of like my my time or sure. like my happiness. So I just have to figure out a way to structure it. Right. But up until or at now, another business. Yeah. So yeah. up until now, it hadn't been a thought. I was just grinding, getting the business up. So For now sure. it's like, now that I'm speaking and sharing knowledge, people are like, yo, now we want to talk to yeah. you. So I was like, okay, let me figure something out. Right. So walk, walk me through your ebook. Okay. Like, for one, why did you come out with an ebook? Okay. Because, I mean, that, that I think that was like the beginning of me, at least me seeing Justin's coming out building this personal Right, brand. right, right. Why did you do it? So it's funny story because, <clears throat> excuse me, like I was saying, I didn't have any mentors or like anybody around me that I felt was like my age, making the same amount of money. I was trying to find these people, but I couldn't. So the first person- How do you? 26. 26. So the first person that I met God up with- me. What? 26. <laughs> 26. Just so, God, yeah, man. You know what I was doing at 26? <laughs> Working at the Cheesecake Factory. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, that was, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so, it made me feel bad about myself. First, I'm person, first person I met um, that wanted to meet up with me was Jason, Mr. Two Weeks Out. Mm-hmm. So he was about to pay somebody twelve or like fifteen thousand dollars to like come and do a whole business audit for him and fix up their their social not their social media like their paid advertising and stuff like that. And then Leon was like, "Yo, you." Probably should just get on the phone with Justin. Good guy. He'll probably help you out. So he DM'd me. Jason DM'd me. And he was like, yo, bro, where you at? I was like, um, I'm at the warehouse. What's up? He was like, Leon just told me to get with you. You might be able to help me out. I said, all right, where you at? I'm on the way. So then pulled up on him and Halani. And we just started to, I literally sat there with them for like two, three hours and just gave them the whole game. Like had to save them at least a couple hundred thousand dollars like mm. in that, that three hour time period. And then from then I noticed that they were doing every Friday doing like these master mind meetups, Neo, Marcus, you know, all of those guys. So I commented one day on Jason's post. I was like, yo, invite invite a young guy out there to come play with y'all boys. So he was like, yeah, pull up to the next one. Pull up to the next one. We you go got to, invited? Yeah. I didn't get invited. <laughs> Stop I didn't get, No, I didn't get no You be invitation. around there, bro, bro. I did not get an invitation. Bro, you be man. there, bro. No, what, 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 um, Friday mastermind did I come to? Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. I I've only there. been to two. Let that be known. I haven't been to none. So the second, <laughs> I, I thought it was just a fluke. You're actually in the circle. All right, man. Shouts out to y'all for not inviting me. Man. You, know, you know who you are. I'm sorry. So, Go ahead. You pulled up to the so, second one. Golly. I pulled up to the first one. <laughs> and the first people I meet is uh, Jonathan Gooch and um, Neo. So Neo, he's just asking me what I do, and little Trey's there too. Um, Trey Spargo. got an invite, and I, Trey, Trey is like Trey, thirteen years old. Trey lives he's with Neo. He's bro. a child, <laughs> and I ain't get you no know, love. I'm tight right now. So we go. And Neo's there. We get to chopping it up. This is my first time meeting him. Hey, what do you do? Whatever. Oh, I do this and that. What's your best month? Oh, you know, last month we did seven hundred thousand dollars. Oh, cool, nice. Wait, do you package up your information? Nah, we just do the business. Well, he was like, oh, so. Yeah, I'm going to just give you some game real quick, little bro, like this and that. He was like, you know, the money that you just made that last month, you have the knowledge to make it. That knowledge, if you package it up, can make 
either that same amount of money or even more if you do it, but you just acting like you too cool or too rich already to put it out. You just, you must got too much money. Like, and I hear Neil saying it. You, so you, you know how he is, right? So he was like, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you seven days to just write an ebook. Just go and write it and we'll see if you do it or whatever. So seven days go by. I lock myself into the studio um, at my boy's spot and 10 to two every day, just seven days straight, just writing it out putting everything that I know about e-commerce, how to start your business from on Shopify from zero to seven figures a month because that's where we were at at the time. And I just put it all out there and then package it up. And that's how I got to that point mm. of even writing one or even thinking about creating it. What's I was, in it? Uh, you said what? What's in it? Literally everything, dog. I put all of my contacts in there. Like the, the every, literally everybody, like, my person who does my email marketing, all of my vendors for my my clothes, like the people really? that I directly use, um, people that do our, our SEO, all of our freelancers, Leon and them that run our ads, the examples of creative, like literally everything, like the everything that I use in my personal business is all there. And then even just like how to start from start to finish a course on how to scale up with Facebook ads, like literally everything. So mm. 27 bucks. So I just figured that at that point, Neo was selling his for 47. And I said, look, I'm going to 10X the value and then cut the price in half and then just put it out there and see how it does. And that was, that was my take on How'd it. How'd it do? It did good. The first month, we ended up doing 30000 So at, On a $27 offer? $27 offer, 30000 the first month. How much you spend in advertising? 10000 Wow. Yeah. Profited 20 grand. Yeah, profit 20 first grand. First month. First month, yeah. I was like, all right, this is cool. So <laughs> right. <laughs> then Clubhouse. So now it's doing even better and spending less money because I'm just going to Clubhouse every day, Absolutely. providing value. And then they just, they flock into it. I don't even have to sell it. So the paid ads is doing the same thing it did for the first month. But then me going and providing value is, you know, heightening it. Interesting. Yeah. Golly. That's crazy. Yeah. So what what is your ultimate vision for yourself though? That's a good question. You have one or is it just like you just kind of just, just um, doing it because you ain't got nothing else to do? You know, uh, I think the ultimate vision is just being happy and providing for my family and giving back however I can. Um, I just see myself as a nine, 10 figure earner because I know that it's possible. I know that the only limits that exist are the ones that we place on ourselves. So I'm seeing all of these people doing these things and I say, why can't I do it as well? So the ultimate goal is just make as much money as possible feed my family and then provide for the community as well. Wow. I, there's no like crazy thing about it. I just want to be one of the most genuine guys to do it and one of the most humble to do it and pull people up because I didn't really have a, a hand up. So Yeah, I, yeah, I want to ask because you know the power of like digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy in a room talking about um, scammers online. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not going to say his name because um, I don't really, I don't want to tear people down and yeah, like, yeah. just say, hey, look at him. But he's a clown. Mm -hmm. He is a clown. Right. So he's talking about like, um, like he's talking about Neo, like he's mm -hmm. a scammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which tells me he didn't really have a conversation with Neo because Neo gave me the whole game and right. it's right, like, literally like, he, <laughs> Everything. Yo, he gave me the whole game and then looked at me the same way he looked at you like, yo, he, yo, he said something to me so disrespectful, bro. I wanted to fight him like, yo, square up me, bro. He's like, what, you don't like money or something? Right. I was like, what? That's what he be doing. <laughs> like, but he's saying it in such an endearing way. Right. It's like, you got a question. Is he disrespecting me? It's the Philly accent that <laughs> make it feel like that. He's <laughs> like, yo, you just act like you don't like money. Right. Because you like so he, he gave me the whole game and I'm like oh it makes sense and I see how he's doing the numbers that he's doing right um, because he's a, providing an immense value and the guy is just a, like he's a clown and this one tells me that he's broke mm -hmm. because in, it's like anybody who is like doing well online or making like a crazy amount of money yeah some people think it's a scam yeah because that's the only way their brain can calculate yeah. yo hold on. If you're making that type of money, you're doing way better than me. Yeah. You're scamming somebody. If yeah. you're not working hard to the bone. Right. But the way Neil's brain works is in systems. And I, I see it with you, too. Like, you see a systematic process. Right. Where some people just see the product. Right, 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 right. So, because you see the power of digital marketing, what are the possibilities? How, how big do you see 
somebody just having an idea if they get these three things right. It's endless. Like, I literally have seen people do a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred million dollars in a, a year just off of straight digital products. You're talking seven dollar offers, fourteen dollar offers doing hundreds of millions of dollars. And then also, which is crazy. And then also your high ticket stuff, your webinars, literally. If you have any amount of knowledge in anything, it doesn't even, you don't even have to be able to build a business. You just have to do something extraordinary to somebody. You don't have to do something extraordinary. It just has to be extraordinary to one person. That might be getting over depression. That might be parenting a child through the pandemic. These are things that aren't, might not be extraordinary to me or someone else, but to someone, it is extraordinary. You just have to be able to get them from zero to one or from zero to wherever you are and provide them a transition. But the possibilities are endless. If you can package up your knowledge and put it online, you can make hundreds of thousands, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars just with information alone. Mm. And it don't even have to be high ticket. That's the craziest part. Give me somebody that you've met that have like accomplished the stuff that you're most, like you're most impressed with and why. Probably this guy named Adrian Morrison. Um, I, he was the first course that I ever bought. Uh, him and Ty Lopez. I haven't met Ty, but I've talked to I've talked to Adrian Morrison. Before. Just a pin in it, real quick. The only thing I knew about Ty Lopez, obviously, he's like the first person to start running yeah, his YouTube yeah. ads. Yeah. Hey, I'm in my garage. My garage or whatever. Knowledge, like. right? <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm just in my living room, right? right? And so you see that, and then the next thing I see is. People talking about his course wasn't good and yeah. he's a scammer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it painted a picture in my mind. Right. Right. Now I never met the guy. Yeah. Never even heard the guy like speak or anything like that. Right. But seeing the ads, I, I identify the person with the things that people are saying. Right. About him. But uh, uh, about two weeks ago, I was in Clubhouse mm -hmm. and I got a chance to hear Ty Lopez Ty talk. Yeah. Giving away spicy game, bro. It was spicy. <laughs> bro, I'm, I'm, you know, like we in the same group chat. I'm like, yo, Ty is going crazy right, right. right now. The way he thinks, this is what he said. He said, um, he said, uh, so I, you know, there's like Q&A people asking. There's like, yo, I'm a young person. You know, what would you tell a young person if they just started out in business? Right. He said, he said, what I would do it's all, he said, I'd buy a course from all the scammers online. Yes. He said, everybody got like the, he said, I'd buy every get rich quick scheme. Every single one. He said, and I'd try it. Right. Just to see what's going on. Right. Just to like indoctrinate, indoctrinate myself with how did you get me to buy this? Right. Or what is in here that makes it a get rich quick? He said, I'd try all of them. Yeah. And he said, yo, you do 10 of them. He said, you'll have, you'll have so much information oh on how to build a business online, yeah. it'd be ridiculous. And he said, he ran across a kid that bought his program uh -huh. months ago. Right. In my head, I see the guy on YouTube, all the people saying it's a scam. Right. Out of all the people that said it's a scam, some kid, it worked for him. Right. And that's all Ty's looking for anyway. Yeah. I was like, God. That's it, bro. Okay, so tell me what, I, you said Ty's name and it got me excited. So shout right. out to Ty Lopez. Yeah. I, I'm sorry for the thoughts I had based <laughs> on other people. You're the man. Right. Okay, go ahead. No, nah, but this dude named Adrian Morrison, because it's important to what you said, because a lot of the times, even if the courses don't work, they spark interest in that field. Mm -hmm. So what my story is, I... Got wind of Adrian Morrison. I bought one of his courses. I didn't have the mindset to be able to even utilize the information that he gave me. It was good information, but I was in a place to where I only had $15 to spend on ads after I invested $1,000 in the course. Mm. So the course was centered around ad spend. So I invested $15 in the ads and I told myself, if I spend this $15 and it doesn't work, then this business does not work. Mm. So I spent it. It didn't work. And then I was off of that. So Based on your mindset. Based on my mindset. $15. $15. It should work. That's it. Because I was young. I was like yeah. 17, maybe 18 when I bought that course. But what it did was it opened my mind to the possibilities of making money online in general. So then when Corey came to me when I was a little bit older, I had the knowledge from the course, but I had a stronger mindset to actually apply it to a business now. So I took that failure and then turned it into this multi seven figure business because now I had the ability to matriculate and have a stronger mindset from when I was 17 to mm. when I was 21. And then I was able to apply 
apply it. But that's why I respect them and all of these people that offer information so much because you offer this information, it might not get them on the first try, but at least it exposes them to the world that yeah. they can make something of themselves and make money online. A hundred percent. It's crazy. Golly, golly. Uh, so in 2020, mm-hmm. COVID-19 uh, plagues our world. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you learn? I learned a lot. I learned that a lot of people can't deal with themselves by when they have to be by themselves. I learned in my mm, bit, Hold on. A lot of people can't deal with themselves when they have to be by themselves. Yeah, because, because a lot of the times we, we have these vices. We have going out all the time. We have liquor and parties and things of that nature. But when we have to really sit down with ourselves and be in the mirror by ourselves and mm. can't go out, some people can't deal with it. So I, I learned that I was... Glad that I got into like meditation and reading and, and being an introvert, and I could sit with myself for hours on end. So I noticed that some people couldn't do that, which mm, is what but it introverted. is. Introverted—that's your bad. Yeah, anyway. so I was I was chilling. Right. Um, I learned that you have to be able to adapt to the current events, and that's really where. Hold on, real quick. Did you have a COVID COVID bay? Nah. <laughs> Uh, you wouldn't tell me anyway on this podcast. <laughs> I go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I learned that you had to get with the times. You had to be really current. So around the time when that was going on, you had the social injustice going on as well. So when everything happened with George Floyd, we actually put out a T-shirt to say, instead of support black colleges, it says support black lives. So be us being able to pivot that quickly, that shirt made $100,000 in one day. But we had to pivot to be able to even do that. So I learned that the real people that are making money, they're able to adapt very quickly to Mm. all of these things that are coming our way anyways. So the real entrepreneurs can take a hit and like put the fire out real quick. Like you have to be able to adapt. So I learned that as well. Wow. $100,000 in one day? Yeah, that was crazy. And we did that two times um, because then when Kobe Day came, 824, we said, hey, all right, Support Black Lives did well. Let's put a Kobe shirt out too, 100,000 in a day as well. So... We did it like we did it a few times, but just being able to adapt, being able to pivot. So and you never had to pivot with cultural thing, and not cultural, but like with current events. Yeah, like we just, I guess we just didn't really do it. But yeah. I just noticed that it was it was a gap in the market, and why not try to bring awareness to the situations and make a little money if we could too. So yeah. Yeah. Mm, which. Is that a strategy moving forward now? Yeah, so now it absolutely works. Yeah, like you know, July Fourth and all of these different holidays. Are y'all gonna do like like, a, like, uh, like a support Black Love? Who knows? Like Yo, that's first a good off, one. Y'all use that. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need a couple hours off that. Yo, tell Corey. Yo, Corey, I came up with that. Okay, nah, that's support hard. Black Love. That's hard. That is hard. There you go. Support Black Women. Meg The Stallion. All of yeah. that was happening. Fifty thousand in a day. Like you know. Oh yeah, I did a support Black. Yeah, women. support Black Women. So it was. In with the times. That's I'm go buy the domain. <laughs> like, That's so funny how digital folks think. They're like, all right, go daddy. Like, <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so, um, yo, this is, you You provided a lot of information, bro. I yeah. think you just, you gave away all the game that you, like, I'm trying to. That's what we. That's how you do. I know. I know what it's what it's the setup is like. Oh, so I gotta 100%. deliver. <laughs> yes, I do it in a very selfish way, man. Because I'm just asking all the questions <laughs> that I want to apply right to my own enough. business. Yo, would you? Okay, so let me ask you. And I think I might have asked you last uh, last time too. Have you gotten into any other investments? No, not just yet. Well, except for like uh, crypto. I was introverted back then. Mm-hmm. We invested in that as well. So. When I, I you got mean, some Bitcoin, yeah, but I got like at three thousand dollars. I was just like spending all of my work money. Just you got it at three thousand dollars, yeah, like thirty five hundred. So I was just like when I was working, yo, bro, it's thirty five thousand. Like today, yeah, oh, no, I'm chilling right now, like OD. So how, did you get a lot of coin? Did you get like full coins? Yeah, yeah. Um, really? Yeah. How many coins you got? <laughs> you oh, gotta keep it low. Keep it low. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all to ask everything. <laughs> wow. But yeah. So. You got it when it was 3500 Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because, yeah. It's how I just believed in it. When do you sell it? Never? Nah, I just believe in holding it. Like How high do you think it's going to go? Uh, I can see 100000 a coin. I can see a million a coin. It's, you know, you never really know. But I just, my strategy is just buying it whatever I want and holding it. So since I believe in it for the long term, mm-hmm. even 35000 might be a small price to pay because I believe it might go to whatever, 350000 So right, just right. accumulating as I, as I feel is necessary. 
Gotcha. What other coins do you like? Uh, I like Ethereum. I like Litecoin. Um, I personally like really like Bitcoin, but all of the other like altcoins, I, if I believe in like the vision and the entrepreneur behind it, I'll throw a couple hundred dollars here mm-hmm. and there. But I mean, you're talking about if you would have got Bitcoin at a hundred dollars alone and like, you know, 20, whatever you sitting on million, multi-million. Right. So Do you just feel like, but at some point these other coins got to go. Yeah. I mean, I think that the ones that are really strong will last. And I think that, um, you know, that's that we can't. It's like guessing. It's like yeah. investing in companies, you know. So whichever one works out, cool. And yeah. if I can throw a couple a hundred dollars here and there and yeah. one of them turns into a few multi-million, all right, cool. Like mm. so it's it's more so that type of wave. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. All right. So and, and I, I joked about it earlier, but like, are you in a relationship or how does that work? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hey, I don't know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so so never mind. Right. Was, never mind. Was it, right? that never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that is hilarious. All right, cool. Uh well, um, yeah, man, I, I think we I think we pretty much covered it. Oh, I do want to ask you this too. Is it too late? Hold on. Brandon! Brandon! Stop. I I can hear you. We're podcasting. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. He's crazy. He's yelling. He's yelling, right? Yeah. I don't know if y'all can hear it in the, in the mic. Golly. All right. Um, do building t-shirt brands right now work? Yes. It's not too late? No. It's definitely not. And there's so many different ways to do it. Even what you see what God is Dope is doing, Sherrod and them, bro, they're mm-hmm. killing it. Five, six dollar t-shirts. Like, there's so many ways to do it. As long as you have a good message or a good price point or good design or you know paid ads, like there's so many ways to win right now. Mm. It's definitely not too late. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Well, thank you. Let me give a, a quick, um, a, um, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Okay. Well, let me ask you the question first. Then I'm going to give you some chance to think about it. Then I'm going to do a quick commercial. Okay. And then I'm going to come back. Okay. okay? So um, I think I asked the last time. Um, where do you see yourself? I like to make predictions on the podcast. And I right. want to know where you see yourself in the next five to 10 years okay. so that we can watch this later and say, yo, Justin said he was going to do this five years ago. And look at him. He's actually freaking doing it. Right. So, okay. So think about that answer real quick. Okay. Um, this episode is sponsored as always by um, The Morning Meetup, The Morning Meetup, The Morning Meetup.com. So go to The Morning Meetup.com and you will see we are the only, the only organization, company, or um, a network that gathers every single day, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to for the betterment of entrepreneurship, okay? So people who haven't started a business, they want to be an entrepreneur, um, they join the call. People who are entrepreneurs and they're trying to take their business to the next level, they join the call. People that are already entrepreneurs and they're like, they're actually killing it, but they're, they need that network, okay? So we got mm-hmm. like millionaires, multi-millionaires that are on the call. It's yeah, really crazy. dope. Multi-millionaires that come on the call to listen to me, which oh, wow. I'm like, yo, it's, it's, it's shocking. That's crazy. It man. really is. But the cool thing is, what I found out is that these super successful people never stop learning. Oh, and yeah. And their thought process is, oh, yeah. I can learn from anybody. Yeah, bro. Like the thing is, is once you change your mindset from money goals to just being a better person, that's mm-hmm. when you really make the crazy mindset shift because money goals can always be double, triple, quadrupled. But when you just focus on being a better person every day, then that can never stop until the day you die. So 100%. that's always something to look forward to rather than just making a billion dollars. A hundred percent. And not that I'm I'm nothing to listen to because I got some dope information. Okay? Don't, don't get it twisted. But I'm literally on the call every single morning. So it's not recorded. It's not tapes. It's not um, recordings. It is recorded though. So you can go back and watch it. But uh-huh. I'm literally on the call every single day. Oh, that's so what's up. That's what's up. I got to get you on the call one day. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, we literally have hundreds of people on the call every morning. Wow. It's crazy. It's like a conference every day. That's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yes, make sure you go to themorningmeetup.com. And uh, here's, I'm going to give you all a little bonus, okay? Just come on, go to themorningmeetup.com. You don't have to put in a, a promo code. I'm going to let you join for $1 for seven days, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm so confident that this is the most powerful community mm-hmm. in the world that I'm going to let you join for $1, no risk, seven days. If you're on for a whole week, if you like it, Stay. It's $79 a month after that. Mm. If you don't like it, you can leave. There's no obligation. You can leave whenever you want to, okay? So go to themorningmeetup.com. Just try us out, and I guarantee you're going to enjoy yourself, okay? So just— That's solid. 
How did you like that pitch? It's pretty like cool. That. Ah, okay, all right. I need to run some ads to it. I've not uh-huh. run not one ad. Wow. We have you hundreds should, of bro. people, and we have not run one ad to bro, this. Bro, you should, because earn your leisure and them guys with that type of situation they got going on are killing it right now. Yeah. You this I, it, I liken it as the same, so I think you can do that as well. Yeah. yeah. That, that was one of the conversations Nehemiah had with me. Yeah. We started talking about, I don't like money. And I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to fight him, but he's like, he's giving me information. So I was like, <laughs> let me not fight him because he's going to keep giving me information. Right. Um, but yeah, so five to 10 years, Jess, where do you see for yourself? Five to 10 years. Um, in the five years, I'm thinking hundreds of millions of dollars in personal brand revenue and then being able to give back a lot of that. Um, Ten years, I think Sport by College becomes a billion dollar company and possibly gets acquired by like some type of or if we feel like it, but like a Nike or Adidas or something like that, because mm-hmm. I see that they're trying to move into those spaces. Um, and I know they are for a fact, actually. So, uh, yeah. And then just billion dollar company. And then hundreds of millions in personal brand. And then literally just doing nothing all day except for what makes me happy. And then investing in my people, family, friends, and then the community. That's It's real simple. That's it. Bro, you made that this episode that much more special. I'm looking at you as Justin Phillips from Support Black College. <laughs> right, right, but right. when you just painted that picture, I said, yo, I'm literally sitting across from a billionaire. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm going to have a billionaire friend. We'll still be friends, right? Yeah, okay, for sure. Like, we're going to dinner. We're going to dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make sure we're cool for at least the next 10 years. <laughs> Golly. But I truly believe, like, the way you see it, your work ethic, mm. and the fact that you're just a good human. I appreciate that. I think you're going to be super successful. You'll be blessed that. with a lot because... You're you're not the like um, you're you're not I don't even you don't even do it for the money like it's, yeah. it's not your conversations are about moving in excellence and growth yeah not necessarily for what we can do with the money yeah because all of that doesn't matter in the grand scheme yeah if you wake up and you're not happy like we need to start talking about that a lot more like and then not even my goal might be a hundred million and a billion but if your goal is to spend more time with your family and make seventy two thousand dollars a year that's perfectly fine so mm. yeah I love it man well thank you so much man I appreciate you joining man make sure y'all click the link in uh we're gonna put we're gonna put the link for your ebook okay cool yeah. Is it still going to be $27? Listen, don't be surprised. It might be $37 or $47 by the Maybe, time. Maybe, right? <laughs> whatever it is, it's like, it's more than worth the money, okay? So whatever it is, just click the link here and um, get access to it. Get the information. If you like this uh, this interview, man, just, uh, just, just pick it up, man. Support um, the brand, but support yourself because, like, it's literally... Nice. Billions of dollars of information that he's putting into this uh, ebook. So, um, just... Um, again, I want to say thank you, man. No, thank you, um, man. This is always a pleasure. Yeah, I have enjoyed this. Yeah. This was good. We I were supposed to do it a few weeks ago. Like, we've been talking about it for, like, almost like a, a couple know. months. Yeah. But this, I think this is perfect timing. Yeah, no, Especially because Brandon's here, and we're going to dinner after this, and he's paying for it. Oh, what? Just, Justin, do some love. <laughs> Let's do it. He's for it. So I told him, Bruce Chris. <laughs> you know what I mean? Facts. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I told him, I was like, man, maybe we should just hang out because uh, I'm on a budget, man. I'm not buying nothing. And he said, uh, and I was like, and plus I paid for dinner last time. And he's like, man, I got it. I said, let's do it. Right. Man, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a better idea that we hang out. It's so, so, <laughs> so um, all right, cool. So if, if you can, man, just close us out with uh, some words of wisdom. Uh, there is an entrepreneur out there with an idea. Yeah. They, they're thinking about giving up or they're thinking about starting mm-hmm. and they just don't know what to do. Okay, so what type of information um, would you like to close this out with? Yeah, I always just say like to avoid analysis paralysis. When I first started, it was very difficult for me because there's so much noise out there. You see this person doing that, this person selling this. And what I had to do was just really get inside of myself and just say, hey, look, if you don't start literally right now, then you never will. So you just need to literally start right now. And I actually just started hiring experts Experts that people that were literally doing what I wanted to do, I just paid hundred dollar consulting call, hundred dollar consulting call here. So, bro, literally just start right now because if you don't, then you won't. Pay people that are experts that are already in the field doing what you want, and that's probably where I would start right now. Um, and then also just 
it's like real cliche, but it's like surrounding yourself around good people. Like when I was in Houston, I was living in a one bedroom apartment with five people and everyone didn't have a job except for me. I would go to work, come back. They'd still be asleep, you know, still just moseying around. And I had to really go inside myself because I knew there was something greater inside of me. So picking up books. You want to be a CEO? The average CEO reads 50 books a year. That's something mm. that you can instantly implement in tomorrow, reading an hour a day to actually get you on the CEO trajectory. So, and then cutting out all the noise. I stopped lo- I stopped listening to the people around me and put in audio books. I started meditating. Like those are things that you can literally implement right now that can change your situation. So uh, I guess I'll leave with that. You can't close it out no better than that, man. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you. Listen, that's that's the end of the show. Like, <laughs> drop the mic. We out of here. Listen, man, do me a favor. Go get some social proof, okay? Go build something. And then I'm asking you um to perfect your craft and learn how to teach it because I want you to teach someone else how to build what you've built. Okay. We are out of here. Peace. All right. What if I told you for one dollar I will introduce you to hundreds of entrepreneurs every single morning this week? From all across the country, you'll be able to talk to hundreds of entrepreneurs and I'll coach you. I'll coach you for a dollar this whole week and I'll introduce you to some of my successful friends for a dollar this week. Would you would you take part in that? Well, go to themorningmeetup.com because that's exactly what we're doing here, okay? The only organization that gathers entrepreneurs every single day for the betterment of entrepreneurship, okay? Every single day, Monday through Friday, we gather, we're growing, we're learning. We got a book club. Have you ever seen hundreds of entrepreneurs reading the same book? every single chapter, every single day, we're growing together, okay? You need the environment to grow in. TheMorningMeetup.com, a dollar. I'm gonna give you all this for a dollar. If you wanna stay, great. It's $79 a month after that. If not, no obligation. You can leave whenever you want, all right? TheMorningMeetup.com, I'll see you in the morning.